Do, 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 do. Oh, man. Good evening, everybody. We've got a couple more minutes before we start here at 8 p.m. This is an impromptu live video that I am doing, and I am still waking up because I have my coffee. So um, this video, if not a lot of people show up live, I, it doesn't really matter to me. This is more of a, you can rewatch it later on and rewind to see the techniques that are being used. Um, we're going to be weathering this box car here for one of my uh, students from the NMRA won a raffle. Uh, little Jacob, man, he's a cool dude. His family, his family is really awesome. So we'll be weathering a box, his box car that he won in the uh, raffle. And this is his box car. Already got the whole thing sealed with Tesla's dull coat. And uh, we're going to be using a lot of the techniques that I uh, showed in my NMRA clinic this past weekend in Dallas, Texas. So um, I'm going to give a couple of minutes here. And uh, like I said, I'm drinking my coffee. And uh, let me know what you guys are up to today. Oh, how how was your weekend? How is your weekend going so far? Man, I am tired. Woo! I'm waking up still, guys. I'm still getting there. Man. And I'm waving. I'm waving. Four people. Awesome. How you guys doing tonight? I hope you guys are doing awesome, awesome time, having a good time. And let me know if you guys actually went to the NMRA clinic. I'd like to know. Um, hashtag not sponsored. Just letting you know. But I got to show you this. I haven't opened it up yet. I did promise uh, Micromark that I will show this off in a new video. And uh, unfortunately, I left my camera in Dallas. So I'm waiting for it to be mailed to me. Uh, so I am doing the best I can uh, right now with, with the equipment I have. Even though that camera was okay to use. Um, but uh, let's see here. I, how the heck can you even open this? Let's, uh, ooh, well, there it is. Okay, so again, hashtag not sponsored. But I did pick up this amazing uh, Michael Mark brush cam. And you can see here, this thing is amazing. And uh, hopefully it's not in reverse. Looks like it is reversed. But uh, so basically you have, um, you, you, you attach a brush and let, and what you do is um, th this uh, little micro, this is a, a micro camera and you attach it to your brush. And so you can blue, you Bluetooth it to your phone and you can look at all the tiny microscopic details that you're painting on your phone. So it's a little camera. It was a pretty cool deal on it. So um, they gave me a really nice deal because they want me to do a video on reviewing it. So I will have to do that for them. So that is definitely definitely in the works currently. All right, I got five people here. I got a like already. Thank you so much for that. Um, I think it is 8 o'clock now. Let's uh, check the time. Ooh, 8 o'clock. Look at that. Okay, I am, man, I am most stuffed up. I am ready to go. All right, so guys, I appreciate you guys coming on in and uh, joining me for this this uh, clinic here. We're going to be weathering this Western Maryland boxcar uh, from one of my students named Jacob. Jacob is one of our younger NMRA members. He is awesome. Oh, hey, Ken, what's going on, man? I'm glad you can make it out. Ken, uh, everybody say hi to Ken. He's, he's, he's doing a wonderful job on his uh, weathering, and he's one of my students from the clinic. And... Um, yeah, we're having such a great time here. So I already have this uh, Western Maryland uh, box car sealed up, ready to go. I have the wheels taken off. So what we're going to do, we're going to remove this here. And one thing I didn't show was how to weather the wheels and the trucks. And so fairly quickly, I'm going to add some paint. And I use the Anita, Anita acrylics. Anita's acrylics are really, really good. Um, I use the black and brown. And uh, with the wheels, you can use... Uh, and like you say, you only need a little dot. Um, you can uh, use a dry brushing technique or just paint it on. I just paint it on, but I don't use that much paint uh, when, I, when I'm doing this. Um, let's see here. Uh, okay, I got some brushes here that are in water. Let's see which one, which one I've been using. That Again, you know, these are like all the kind of different kinds of brushes I use. Ah, that, that's a good one. Dry it up here. Okay. There we go, it's dry. Okay, we're going to uh, take a little bit of, uh, like I said, I'm using a tiny bit of paint, not a lot. And guys, this paint will last you a while. If you, you know, you'll, you, need, you don't need to use a lot. And so we're painting this as, uh, and weathering this car as in, in the 50s. So um, we're gonna, that's what we're gonna be doing here. So I got the uh, trucks here, they're already sealed with Delcoat. 
Um, now you don't have to really seal them with Delco if you don't want to. Um, I just I just do to give it a nice um, a nice uh, base to work off of. Okay. And so here we go. Here we go. Just painting it on. Um, I used this one's going to have a little more brown than the black. But you decide what you want, okay? I mean, that's how much paint I'm using, as you can see here. There's not a lot that I'm using here, okay? And you can see here, you know, they got a little bit of that brown showing through. And what's great about the Anita acrylics, again, I'm using the flat, the earth brown and the flat black, okay? And it dries flat. That's what I love about the Anita acrylics. And look at the price, guys. It's only like $2.99 for the bottle. And these big bottles which will last you years. I'm telling you, these will last you years if you use them the way I do. Um, only $4, okay? So welcome, guys, all the new guys coming on, and I appreciate you guys come hanging out with me on this beautiful Saturday evening. I'm telling you, it's really nice here in Arkansas tonight. It's in the 50s. Okay, a little more paint there. We're going to paint this truck now. Really? All right. Awesome, Dave. Using oil paints. You know, oils are really, really good. I really want to get into oil painting techniques. Um, I've been using acrylics for a few years, and I'm starting to get more into the oils. And I would like to um, get to the point where I could actually do a clinic on using oils as well. So um, let me know how it turns out, man. I really want to see it. You can, if you, you can share it on my uh, social media, or you can send me a message and... Uh, I'll, I'll I'll feature it on my uh, social media, either on Instagram or Facebook, or maybe both. Actually, my Facebook is connected to my Instagram, so we'll um, I'll share it to both. Okay, so we're gonna let those dry, and I'm gonna go into the wheels now. If you look at wheels, wheels have this sort of brownish color, right? And actually, if you give me a second, I have a whole a huge bookshelf of stuff here. That uh, let me let me grab a book here so I can show you really quickly. Um, I have, let's see, we have rolling stock books. <laughs> so yeah, believe it or not, I have tons of rolling stock books and I'm looking for one over here. Um, let's see. Tons of many coal cars, Reading coal cars, um, Rudy Nearest, Diesel, Open Hoppers, okay. And it's interesting because a lot of these cars, they're, uh, they're somewhat old. Um, old black and white photos, and so it, it gets to a uh, point where. All right, let's see here. I think I should have. There's a few in here. I'm um, really. You could just take any book or any. Go on Google. Just look up a freight car, and um, you know, and then just go to town looking at different photos. And uh, let's see here if I could find a, a photo. If not, I'm just going to continue going because we know what freight car wheels look like. But I like to show a prototype so you can show that I'm just. Uh, not making up as I go along, even though sometimes it's fun to make up stuff when you go along, especially with weathering, because it's it's weathering, guys. It's nothing. Nothing's really perfect. Um, but uh, let's see here. I really, you know, that's kind of fun. I picked up one random book, and it's basically locomotives and not freight cars. Um, let's see. Let me. Uh, I, there's a couple of pages here that I'm looking into. No, oh, by the way, these these. Uh, Borkowski, uh, Junior Richard Borkowski group uh, books are amazing. Uh, Emery Goulash books are great too, for for research and just for reading. So if anybody just likes to enjoy reading and or like me looks like the, looks uh, likes looking at the pictures too, um, these are amazing, amazing books. Anyway, I'm not going to worry about that. That'll waste time. Um, so anyway, um, they mo you mostly have like a brownish, a really really dark brown, and don't forget a newer newer wheel, right? A newer wheel is going that has been added recently on a, on a train on a freight car. You know, they have a really light rust color. And um, so when you when they're on the road, they're getting all that dirt. So you got a lot of brown and black on those wheels. So we're going to do is take a little bit of the black, mix it in here. I'm going to use a little more black than brown this time. You can see here the bottom color is darker. And that's what's going to go on going on. That's what's going to go on the wheels and you paint the inside. Okay. That's it. Just paint the inside. And I'm not dry brushing. Here. I'm just painting, but you know, 
You don't want to overdo the paint, of course. And what you do is when you finish, again, your wonderful cheap Q-tips, clean the tip off the wheels. That way your cars can roll freely on your layout. Okay, you get some of that off. Okay, that's done. Okay, we're going to go a little more brown, a little more black, mix it in there. There we go. And you want to seal the metal wheels first because the paint won't stick completely. It won't adhere to the metal. So you want to spray it first and clean the flanges. That's what the rubbing alcohol is good for. It's cleaning, cleaning the, the wheels, cleaning your brushes, um, cleaning certain weathering powders off. Um, if you need to clean, there we go. Um, if you need to uh, clean off some sealing, uh, if you let's say you seal your model, you need to clean some of it off to start over. You can use the weathering. Um, excuse me. You can use the alcohol. The alcohol works, and it doesn't. I mean, ninety percent is great. Seventy percent is great. You know, either one will work, guys. It's not really a, a big, um, a big, big difference. Um, and rubbing alcohol is really, really good for um, spreading out water. So if you're ballasting a your track. You want to spray or use an eyedropper here. I use I bought a bunch of these eyedroppers. I use them to uh, go on the sides of the track when I when I ballast, and um, and then I um, use the uh, water and glue mix after I I douse the the entire track with rubbing alcohol. It spreads the water and the and the uh, water and glue evenly. Okay. There we go. We'll do that. Clean. Make sure the uh, the flanges are clean. Okay. And you know, I mean, locomotive wheels are different from freight car wheels. You know, you're not, there aren't any running electronic parts attached to the wheels, right? So if it gets a little pain, it's okay. You just want them to, to, to roll freely, what it comes down to, right? So make sure you do that. Um, just clean the flanges and clean the tips off the ends of the car here. And I know this is like the boring part, right? Um, you know, when I have a bunch of freight cars at one time that I'm doing for a client, um, it's uh, I take all the wheels off and the trucks off. Let's say like freight, five freight cars, right? I'll take all the trucks off, all the wheels off, especially if they're all the same. Um, I put all the screws in here. This is my little uh, container. I keep all the screws and parts that I need in that little container. And then... Uh, do pretty much all the wheels and all the trucks in one time. Yeah, it's like it's painstaking because <laughs> you want to get to the real fun part, which is weathering the actual body of the car itself. But you know, we got to do the wheels and all the um, and all the um, uh, we call it the trucks, right? All right, I'm gonna put these in my paint, paint booth. I'll be right back. I'm really right 10 feet away from my paint booth. I'm gonna spray these down, dull it, and seal them, and then we're gonna get to the box car itself. By the way, ceiling fan, any kind of uh, maybe a little mask if you don't want to breathe in the chemicals, you know, that will help. So all I'm using, guys, is Tester's Dough Coat. That's all I'm using. You can use matte medium will work as well. I have, um, and actually I learned something from, from experience this past weekend when I was working on a project um, for a client. Okay, so I've talked about matte medium in my clinic. You know, matte medium, like so, matte medium, if I could find it here. Oh, that's crystal. Well, actually, I'll show about that in the meantime. Um, okay, so these work really, really well. Crystal clear will give you a little bit of a gloss, right? It'll be shiny. This is good for, let's say, you, um, you're you doing a, uh, a, paint, a paint job and you want to seal it to, do, uh, to add decals. You want a nice um shiny surface to work off of the decals they slide better so I'll use a clear crystal gloss enamel will work um matte clear is good gives you a good sheen and um and uh hey sparky how you doing man nice to see you glad you guys can make it out here tonight um so yeah matte clear is good for uh let's say you you're covering your paint let's do, you're doing a paint job on the uh, car right um matte matte clear is really good for that 
the what I've learned was, and I said this in the clinic that Matt Clear, you know, when you're using, let's say using weathering powders, right? And I told you that the Matt Clear could blow some of those powders off. That's true. And I'll show you a since the, these these are drying. Um, I used weathering powders on an Alco PA and a P and a, and a B unit recently, and the tester's dull coat actually sealed the powder on the model just fine. It didn't blow it off. It didn't ruin the uh, the the powdered work that I did. So, so I'm going to correct myself now that Matt Clear, you know, I would. It's good to use, but definitely go for the test is dull coat to seal your model when you're using powders, okay? I probably, like, like I said, I, I just woke up from working overnight. Um, so forgive me if I'm over-talking. <laughs> so, so I probably could have said that in three sentences instead of two, but I wanted to explain that to you guys and and, and, and clarify what I said during the clinic. See, I got, I got a whole thing of coffee here, so I'm still drinking coffee and still waking up my brain. Okay. All right. So let's do that. So now we got those colors. Dry brushing. We're going to show dry brushing next. Okay. Now you can use a piece of paper. You can use paper plates. Um, paper plates are cheap. They're easy to find. Again, paper. Or if you want, you know. Yes. Use it. Yes. Exactly. Using a spray can. Um, you know, hold it. Hold it far far enough away. Um, I do about six to eight inches away from the model. And sometimes if I'm spraying, let's say this is this, I need to seal this, right? If I'm spraying it, I'm probably like right about here and let it just dust over the model. You don't want it right against it like this. Okay. Hey, Stevie Rarero, man. Nice to have you join me. And uh, guys, I really appreciate appreciate all the support. Um, you guys have been awesome throughout the years. And uh, recently, especially uh, doing all different kinds of... Uh, me doing a lot of different uh, videos. Um, I do plan on having an NMRA video out. And I am going to be, again, hashtag not sponsored, but I'm going to be reviewing this awesome, upside down again, um, this awesome Micromark brush cam. This thing is amazing. So uh, uh, we call it. Look forward to those videos. They're going to come out soon. I um, have to use my old camera because I left my camera at Chris Atkinson, Atkin, Atkinson's house. By the way, he has an amazing layout. Okay, let's let's continue here. All right, so this is all dry, ready to go. Dry brushing, right? <clears throat> so you can use the note, note, sticky notepads. These work great. You find them cheap. And then uh, I just use it right, right on here, just like that. And so what I do is, let's see, I am going to, we're going to do it underneath the car first. How about that? And I said during the clinic, you can use... Um, let's say camouflage spray paint or brown spray paint as a base and just go just spray it across make sure everything's taped but again if you want it you're gonna have to tape everything you know because you will get overspray on the car sometimes that may look good i don't know um i haven't really done it too often because i do mostly by hand by hand in a spray um i'm trying to find one of my brushes here that no that's not it that's a big one i want that one it's a big brush uh that's way big. That's way bigger than I. Okay, let's see here. No, I think this is the one. No, that's a smaller one. I'll find one of it. I have a thousand brushes. I'm trying to find one in here. Okay, here we go. That's the one. Okay, dry br dry brushing. Basically, getting the effect. Dry brushing is like the effect of of a of a uh, airbrush, right? That's what dry brushing is. Ooh, it's dry. Nice and nice and dry. Okay. All right. So we're going to take some black and brown paint. Same paints. Again, using the same kind. Look how much I am using here. There's barely any paint I'm using, right? So I'm use some brown and a little bit of black and a little too dark. Let me do this. I'm going to try to show you so you guys can see here. Okay. I mean, I'm barely using any kind of paint, right? And you want to take as much paint off that brush as much as possible. Okay, like bare minimum. See how dry that is? That's what you want. Okay, so we're gonna go underneath here. And don't forget, these are the these are you got the pistons here, you got um the brake, the brake, um, you got brake piping, and so this stuff is filthy because it's underneath the car. 
and all that dirt and grind is getting kicked up from the tracks and, and the other freight cars, right? And see, it comes on. And so I just give them a whole, just a nice coat. That's all I'm doing. You see, you already see a difference here, right? Hopefully you can. Okay, and you use the same, if there's a little bit of wet spots on that, on that paper. You just continue working working that piece of paper and the paint that's on the paper here. Okay. So that's how that's how you do some dry brushing. Well, yes, I um okay, so um where are you? Where are you? This phone's driving me crazy. Where are you guys? Oh, there you go. Okay, so uh T C D N M R A R Excuse me here. Oh my gosh! Hey, buddy, <laughs> I just saw the uh, the uh, your um, top chat. All messages are visible. Thank you. Okay, um, man, it's good to see you. Yeah, Ken, nice to see you, man. No, it's okay, man. I was looking. I saw. I saw your logo on your uh, um, on your um, uh, your, your YouTube your YouTube uh, your YouTube uh, name. Oh my gosh, I can't talk today, guys. Um, yeah, no, I just, I just saw your, your channel profile picture. <laughs> I was like, oh man, I have your sticker. Thanks for the stickers. Hey, by the way, um, the Twin Cities, those guys are awesome. The NMRA guys, I, guys, that, Ken, thank you for the hospitality and meeting you in person. That was a lot of fun talking with you guys and hanging out during the convention. Guys, if you didn't go to the convention, you guys missed out. I'm just letting you guys know. Um, it was a good time. Okay, so dry brushing isn't that hard, Ken. It really isn't. Now, it's kind of hard to see here. Um, pretty much you just got to work until you get the, the desired, desired feel, um, of your, of how dry you want the paint to be. And I may go to another model to show you how it really looks like, um, on a different, cause this is a brown on brown. Yeah, I know. I know. I know Dave, you told me, man, it's, I know it's, it's like California. That's one I'm, I don't think I'm going to make just because it's a little, going to be a little too far away. Um, you know, but I'm definitely planning on going to Detroit. That is definitely, definitely, um, on, on my map here. So what I'm going to do is, and you can actually paint, um, paint this into the thing with painting, uh, more of a wet base, uh, is that you're going to get paint, um, brush strokes, right? So with the dry brushing, you won't see any bright, you won't see, um, a lot of those uh, brush strokes. So when you um, do a dry, a dry brushing technique, it's more looks like it blends into the model. Okay, so that's 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 why dry, dry brushing is um, is really uh, fun and it looks way more prototypical than if you're actually painting it. And yes, you can use the powders to soften the um, the look of the of the paint, and that's what powders are good for as well. Um, I'll show you an Alco PA that I just finished. And I use both all the techniques from the clinic just on that model. I'm gonna use a little more black here on this, so and you can layer it up too. So I actually I'm gonna use a little more black. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna show you this, and I'll continue doing this off, off the uh, off YouTube because I don't want to be sitting here for an hour just trying to trying to do uh, an underbody of a car. I want to get to the other stuff too. But you, know, but you work at it, right? Keep working at it until you cover the whole car. And I'm using a little bit of blacks here. See how I'm just, it's getting drier and drier. Um, I'm just doing this, brain, putting the paint on it. Um, and then you can come back with powders and add another layer of powders over it to just to blend it all in. Or you can layer the paint on top of the paint, which works too. But the thing with, you know, dry brushing is that you want to seal it before you put another layer of paint on because you will take that first layer off. That's just, you know, especially if it's not dry. Um, learned that the hard way, you know. Okay. So I'll go, I'll go inside here later off camera to finish it up on the bottom. And maybe next time I'll do another live video. Uh, on an O scale model, so you guys can see uh, stuff close up. 
Yeah, it's easy to add more, Dave, and it's harder to remove. Um, but that's why you, you – well, the good thing is, um, you, you know, if you don't like certain layers, um, rubbing alcohol will take it right off, and you can start all over again. So it's not a uh, – uh, it's not it's not, it's not a uh, – it's not the end of the world if um, if you feel like the third layer is not as great and you realize the first layer wasn't that good. You can you can either clean it right off or start over. Just add a coat of paint over what you did and start again. You know, it'd be like a fourth layer, but it's kind of giving you a clean slate. <laughs> I know. Yeah, when you when you introduced me as your name is Dave, I just I just I'm just really formal like that. Um, but if you if you hey. If you prefer Sparky, well, I'll call you Sparky. I mean, I know every, most, just about everybody knows you as Sparky from YouTube. By the way, man, good job on your um, in a motor yard. It looks really good. If if anybody here is not subscribed to Sparky, subscribe to him. He has a really good channel. He does a lot of fun live videos, and he does a lot for this hobby. Um, he does a lot of the uh, YouTube meet and greets, which I plan on doing one of these days. Yes, I agree. I absolutely agree. And uh, the reason why I'm doing this is because I'm doing this for one of my students. He won a raffle, and I told uh, he won a raffle to whether one of my one of his freight cars for free. Um, but when we do another, when we do a uh, yeah, you're welcome, Sparky. Um, but, but I'll do another uh, clinic um, on YouTube, and I'll do a bigger car, like S scale or O scale for sure. But you can see here, here's the dry brushing, right? See the difference of something that's not done. And stuff that is done okay so let's go to the front of the car now western maryland okay you figure cold country um you figure the 50s it's got some steam era uh weathering on it right um because you look at the reporting marks it's showing 1953 so steam was still around right so we're gonna get a new piece of paper see look i use that right this one's completely clean so you're not wasting paper really uh, unless you're doing different projects. So I'm going to do some more dry brushing. <clears throat> and I'm going to take a little more of that brown paint, a little more of that black, mix it on the paper, get a nice dry, a little bit of dry, not too dry. What we're going to do is I'm going to get a flatter brush. Okay, look how thin that is. These are actually the brushes I had for the clinic. So I want to use something you guys, now uh, you guys were used to using. Okay, so look here. Okay, so easier to use a photo as so, so Sparky asked if it's easy to use a photo as a reference. Absolutely. Okay. Um, videos, the you know, videos, either either live streaming, YouTube, or DVDs, VHS, whatever you guys have. That's great. Um, hey, no, Sparky, ask as many questions as possible. That's what this is for. Um, books, 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 books. Okay, I'll I'll go say hi. And then do this here, okay? Look at my bookshelf. All those books down there, okay? And I'll scream to my rest of my studio. There's my music side. But all I got old books in there too. So I got tons and tons of books everywhere. Um, if I go to the living room by the train layout, I have a whole ton of magazines, artic uh, articles that I cut out from old magazines, stuff that's on weathering, stuff I need to look for. Um, I got tons of DVDs and VHS tapes, okay? So... Everything and anything you can use, use it. Definitely use it as a reference. All right. Excuse me. Um, so you can see here, look how much paint it took off here, right? And look how much paint is on that brush. It's dry, right? Look. It's on there. It probably just dried a little too much. <laughs> so what we're going to do is I'm going to take the other brush that I was using, right? Mix the paint on one side. That's a little too black, right? We don't want that black. That's too black. Lose a little more brown. Again, I'm using two colors, guys. That's all I'm using. Okay. Dry it just a bit. That's probably a little too much paint. Okay. There we go. And then get a little more paint on there. And kick up. Overspray and a kick up. Okay. The wheels are down here, correct? So what you want to do is brush upward. That's kind of hard to see. We're going to actually get a little more black. That brown is not really showing where I want it to. But just that subtle difference. Okay. And that's the overspray, the kick up. Um, 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little more black to this. It's a little too brown. It's not really showing on the model because it's a brown box car. Um, so let me uh, add a little more brown to that. I mean, black, excuse me. Black, 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 black. Okay. Okay, here we go. There we go. That's what I want to see. Okay, there you go. There's your there's your overspray. You do the side here. See the side that doesn't have it, and there it is. We'll go a little bit, little bit of black powder, and it will enhance that just a bit. Okay, I'm gonna use some more black here. And this is strict black. This I'm not using any brown this time. You can see how the black blends in more on the freight car. And my students know I'm not a good a guy for term for terminology. I'm horrible with it. I just see what I see and go for it. <laughs> so um, even being a railroader, I have no idea. I just know how to do my job pretty much. I can't tell you uh, what 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 piston is and these these little moves, this locomotive or anything. I know it runs. I know how to count cars and I go to go to town and do my job and go home. Okay, there's your overspray. That's it. Okay. And I'll have pictures of this on my social media so you can see a close up. Um, so let's see here. Okay, that's that's for that. Um all right, so now we're gonna now we need the bottom, right? We need the bottom. So now look at the if you can see here, no, it's hard to see. Okay, so with the weathering. Want me to drum wipe out for you guys? Um I can, I guess. I, I mean, I, I know I can do it, but it'd be hard to hear. Live chat. Let's see. Okay. Um, all right. I'm scrolling here. Okay. Okay. So with the weathering, does a little does a little go a long way? Okay. Yes. Um, you know, less is more. You know, and don't forget Alan McLennan's uh, uh, most famous statement good and the good the two words good enough sometimes good enough is good enough that's all you need um you know less it, it is more and it, again it depends on the model but don't forget you know during my clinic i was showing a bunch of photos from the 50s and 60s stuff was really grimy especially in the 40s and i mean in the 40s and the 50s you have a lot of soot on top of the um locomotive the diesels because they weren't from the diesels they were from the steam engines working in the yards um, you know, so for instance here, um, I have stuff from the sixties and seventies. So for instance here, uh, let me get Scranton, Phil let's do Philadelphia. And I have a book on Chicago. Okay. And again, this is what this is about guys. If you have any questions, I don't mind going forever on, on stuff like this. This, this is, it's important for me. Um, and I enjoyed this stuff. Uh, so let's see here. I got a book on. Okay, so this is this is obviously the fifties. Okay, I don't know, I'm trying to do this here. Let me move my camera up a little bit. How about that? Ooh, ooh, excuse me. They just popped right off my stand. Hold on. Hold, please. Don't let anybody sick. Let's move it. Ah, there we go. Okay, I'm sorry about that. Um, okay, so this is Philadelphia. And I'm trying to, I just lost my photo. Now, 50s and 60s, things were filthy. Um, okay, so let's see here. Um, that's a bad photo. Let me, uh, it's too far away. You can't really see it. Uh, let's see here. Okay, so this is above. All right, so these are like the 50s, okay? That's the 50s. And look at, look at this stuff here. That's that's the 50s as well. Okay, so let's go to the 60s. Now, it depends where you, I guess, where you're modeling to. Um, it's mostly steam. 
let me see here. I think this book here, Chicago. This is 60s, okay? So here, this book's on the 60s. So it's still pretty filthy stuff. Now, don't forget, you know, Santa, you got to look at what, look at the boxcars back there, right? Um, I think that may be a deadline. I don't know. But uh, certain things were, um, certain things were clean. Certain things were really dirty. Um, don't forget the 60s were the decline in passenger operations. There was a decline in a lot of freight operations. You had mergers happening. So it really, really depends on what you're modeling, where you're modeling. Here's 1963, okay? But look at the Santa Fe train, how clean that looks. Um, and then we'll go back into the, uh, I'm trying to find a, uh, and I'm a railroader, I'll tell you, I, nothing's clean. Nothing, there's some kind of weathering on everything. Um, and again, there's a lot of mix of stuff here. So you look at, you know, Chicago, you know, so these all the, these, this, this book takes place in the sixties. Okay. So it did, it just really, um, it depends where you're modeling, where you're modeling. Here's the, uh, uh D -D -D. here's the Pennsylvania railroad in the sixties. Yeah. It all depends on where things fall, where you're modeling the location and again, I use the term longevity of exposure. How long has stuff been sitting out in the elements, right? It all depends. I, because I have locomotive number 71 that was came out of the shop with prime paint. And it looked crystal beautiful, shiny new for like two weeks. And then like a month later, it's already being bleached out from the sun. So, you know. Okay, let's get back to this. Um, some black here, some more brown. I'm going to mix the colors on the palette here. Okay, it's a little too dark. That's a little too black, right? I'm going to get a little more brown on the palette. There we go. It's a little more like, like I want it. Okay, a little more. Too much paint. Okay. And there we go. Oh, I'm going to lower it a little bit now. Let's lower it back down there. There we go. Okay. Okay, a little bit of paint. Now you want to get at least at least some dirt and grime on the bottom here, right? Now it's hard to see. I hope I hope you can see. Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. A lot of sand dust, a lot of brake dust. Um, it just it just depends where where you're modeling. You know, the desert is going to be different weathering from Chicago or from I don't know from New York. You know, and uh, different from Florida, different from Texas. It just depends where you're modeling and the area you're modeling. But look, look at what he did. See, we started from the bottom, right? And hopefully you can see that. Um, and you can look at the look at the brake pipe, look brake cylinders, right? Look, have some grime, and look at that dry brushing. All right, it blends right in. Doesn't look like it's painted. It looks like it's airbrushed. That's the whole paint of dry of dry brushing. Okay, so obviously we're gonna get. The ladders, the uh, the the your foot. Um, geez, I can't I can't think of the damn the the uh, the terms of this stuff. Um, there's a little more paint here. I'm gonna go a little thicker on the bottom here. And don't forget today's today's weathering is a lot different from those days. Um, the equipment is different. Okay, so all I'm doing is dry brushing and just adding some paint on the very bottom here. Okay, and I'll show you a little techniques here that you can use too. Um, you, I got a little more black than brown this time. Okay, let's say I go like this. Oops, all right? I'm going up too high. I don't want that. Take a Q-tip, just clean it right off. And this is dry Q-tip, it's not, but the cool thing is, it gives you a little bit of residue of the paint. And so then it looks like you got a little chipping here and you got a little bit of um, dirt on the numbers. 
And all you did is use paint. That's two, two, three dollars for a little bottle. That'll last you a while. Um, and you can use a little bit of water if you want to really clean it off. You can, right? And now it's clean. Voila, it's gone. <clears throat> and that's it. Okay, I'm going to use a little more down here. And I want to, I want to add a little bit down here like that. That's what I want to do. I'm going Bob Ross style. This is what I want to do. Okay, so the doors have it. There's under, some under underneath here. There's some grime and dirt and dust being kicked up. <clears throat> and don't forget, this is just the base, guys. We're, you know, still going to do some powder work. You can. You don't have to, but I uh, will do, do some powder work. Okay, so it's thin, thick. Down here. Okay, a little bit up here on the uh, the door, on the locks, the handles. A little more on the, uh, not the brake cylinder, there, uh, the reservoir. There's a reservoir down here. A little more down there. Okay. And all I'm using, guys, is black, flat, flat black paint, uh, acrylic paint. That's it. I'm not using any other color. Okay, we'll use some of that off. A little bit of that. Take that off. Okay. And again, if you don't like what you're doing and it's a little too much, take a little water and a Q-tip, dry it up a little bit. Clean, it comes right off, guys. Okay, comes right off. Okay, and that's all I'm going to do with that. That's it. All right, it's very subtle. Just enough to get something on the bottom, right? Okay, we got our stuff down there. Uh, what I'm going to do is go a little bit further on this model and I'm going to use it. Uh, I like rainy day gray. That's a good paint chipping um, paint uh, color. But I'm not going to use any, I'm not going to do any paint chipping on this. Ooh, too much paint. Only need a little tiny bit. Um, let's see here. And what I'm going to do, the same brush, doesn't really matter. So what I'm doing is I'm getting a little bit of that gray on here and mix with that black to get like a light gray. Take a little bit of that brown, mix it in. And you know, these here, this is wood. Even on real, on the cars today, um, this is the wood plank. And it's for bad orders. You staple a bad order sign to the car. And back in those days, that's what they did. So I'm going to use a little of that brown and that gray, mix it in. So it looks like a little bit of that, um, like it's wood and it's weathered. Again, just a little subtle thing you can do to add a little bit of, a little bit, uh, a little bit of uh, effect to your car here. I'm going to use a little more brown on this, actually. And you can see here, it's starting to wipe off the paint because it's too wet. So that happens. Dry it. Come back with a little more brown. A little, a little bit gray. I want to add a little more brown to that. There we go. And that's it. Okay. Um, I'm going to add a little more uh, gray in the bottoms here. By the coupler. And underneath the overspray. As you can see a little better. It looks like there's... Um, ballast dust kick up too so it brings it out just a little bit more yeah man I, i'll tell you one thing this little hair dryer i had it for eight almost 2017 i yeah i had it for six years and i got it and i got it i think in mississippi at a goodwill for like three dollars <laughs> i still use it okay so still with the dry brushing we're gonna go do couplers okay i'm gonna work on the couplers here 
Now, what's nice about this model, the the um, the 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 metal, these Katie's, they're already black, so I don't have to worry about painting them black. They already are black. Those those uh, quote unquote air hoses, right? So what I like to use, okay, you can use all different kinds. So this uh, dark rust is Ames. Ames is good. Um, even uh, dark earth or a rusty brown by uh, Monroe Models. These are some good. Um, coupler colors that you can use you can use rubbing alcohol you can use water or you can use paint again i have paint in here already so i'm just going to use the paint to mix the color and i and i, I forgot to seal the heck out of this well and and route back home to arkansas open this up here there we go Ooh. okay we'll do that okay same brush. You clean it later. You can always clean it later on. You use a little bit of brown. Oh, yeah. I'm going to use a little bit of brown paint. Okay. And I'm going to just dip a little bit of that, that rust color. This brings a good base color to your coupler. Okay. And what I do is I get the top here, the dirt on the coupler. Get underneath it, get around it. Try to be try to use a thin brush to get around that that spring if you can. Go on here. Okay, so there's your color. Compared to the other one. Actually, what am I doing here? I can see it now. Maybe I can see it. Uh, okay, there's the black, right? Actually, you know what's wrong? This light is not directly over the model. It's towards my eyeballs. Hold on a second, guys. There we go. Maybe that would work better. Not just blinded myself, but... Uh, okay, so there's black, and this is what's been used. Okay, and it's painted. Okay, so that's a nice color right there. Um, you can add a little bit of black to it. You want to do a little bit of dry brushing black. You can mix it right in where you have your little, where you have your um, your little uh, little bit of the powder that's right here. I can add a little black to it. Well, that's a little too much. And you use black if you want to darken it. And it give you that kind of color. And so now it looks darker. So we can do it right here. You can see the difference in the color. Mix that around. Okay, so that's something that's a little darker. Okay, so that's something that's way more darker than this one. It's lighter. You can see the difference here. Okay. Appreciate the likes, guys. Thank you so much. And uh, the guys still hanging out with me. I appreciate you guys hanging around. Okay. So now I'm going to go. Um, I'm going to do is I'm going to seal this. I'm going to go back to the trucks. And while this is drying, work on the trucks. And uh, we'll start the weathering patterns. A little bit of dirt there. I mean, add a little bit of stuff right here, just on the sides. Just a little bit of weathering on the rooftop here, and a little bit on the brake wheel. Okay. Oh, you know what? I forgot they have that side too. Excuse me a second. Let me finish this. Done. Okay. Let's spray this. And you can use uh, matte medium on here. I have, I just have the testers handy right here next to my paint booth, so I'm gonna use testers. All right.
truck time. Truck time, wheel time. All right. Put that in there. So this is what I mean. It's hard to see. You get a little shine on the wheels because the paint, it's dry, but you still, it wasn't sealed properly. So you can see a little bit of that, that metal through the wheel. So it's not fully weathered. Yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, you definitely have more working time than 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 you would think for sure, uh, Sparky. Um, that's how the car is. Yeah, yeah, Tim. Um, for John, yeah, researching is is a deep rabbit hole to go down. Absolutely, man. Um, you could go crazy on it for sure. Um, so what I'm going to do now is um, just since that dried, I'm going to add a actually another layer of paint on the wheels because it didn't dry like I wanted it to. And that's my fault. There we go. Just another coat will work. And I'll clean and seal it. Uh, where's my, here it is, a little wet. Good. So I'll clean the tips off here. Okay, there we go. That's good. All right. Let me see. It's not really rolling. Okay. So if it's not really rolling, it's not sealed a little bit. Let's clean some of that off more. There we go. Oh, much better. Okay. See, that's why it's important to clean the tips of these wheels off um, before it dries. Or you may have a tough... There we go. Now, now it's spinning. Okay. Well, this one may be the same thing. So, okay. So, wheels... All right. Once they're finished... Uh, dried and, and you got these tips completely cleaned off you can put them back on the trucks you don't have you don't have to weather them with powders um, individually individually because you want it all to blend in together right with the truck plus now these tips are covered they won't get they won't get dirty uh, as dirty as they were um, from the um, from the paint and from the powders. Okay, so let me, I'm uh, just looking here I'm as I'm talking. Um, let me add a little more of this here to this here. There we go. Okay, let me go. Uh... I had to fix a spot on some of these wheels here. This one's actually good. This one's better, okay. This one's good, and this one's good. Okay. Um, and that should be clean enough. It should roll just freely. But yeah. You know, you can take a little... Um, yeah, that, that spins nice. Um, you can take even, like, a little, little, your little blade, a little uh, hobby blade, right? And just clean off the tips here, right? Scrape some of that ex excess paint off. You can do that works, too. Okay. All right. Are we spinning? Yeah, we're spinning nice and pretty. Okay, powders on here. So we got, I, use, I like using Dark Earth. Dark Earth Ames is nice. Okay, um, here's a Dark Earth as well. Same same color in uh, Monroe models. Makes Ames, um, Ames products are good too. I'm actually going to use this. And so I was telling my students during the clinic, look for a nice makeup brush or a very soft brush. I mean, look how. Look how soft that is, right? And it feels nice. It tickles, actually. That's how soft it is. And um, I go right on the wheels themselves. Get a little bit on the truck, too. Now it's all blended in. So this is before, right? That's before. This is after. Looks very realistic, and that's just using one powder, and that's dark rust, uh, dark, uh, dark earth brown. 
That's it. Okay. Um, if someone asked me about the inside, yeah, we go on the inside as well. And so what I do is, um, normally I'll do it first, uh, is paint that, but let me uh, get one here so I can touch this. So I, the inside, I just take brown paint, guys. That's all I do. I take the inside brown paint um, and go on the inside. Let the wheel spin. Okay, turn it around. And all, all my clients' models get this same, same weathering. All the wheels done inside and outside. Okay, so now you got a nice even coat of brown paint on the inside, which will which will dry flat. Then you go back and if you want to add uh, powders, you can. And this doesn't take it doesn't take any that much more time. It takes maybe five minutes to do a set of a set of trucks. Okay, there we go. All right, let that dry. All dry. Go back in here and do this one now. Right? How long did it take? About a minute? Right? Oh, used the wrong side of the brush. Okay. All right, I'm starting to finally wake up. Feels good. I'm actually dying for a shot of whiskey. I don't know about you guys. Okay. Let's do that in here. All right, guys, that's inside. Oh, I sealed the powders and trucks. Okay. I still use Intestious Dull Coat. I, I mentioned earlier, Sparky, I think it's before you joined, the matte medium, it does hold the paints to the model better, but not really the powders. And I've learned on when I was working on a client's project that actually the Intestious Dull Coat holds the, the powders better. And sometimes you may have to get a second coat of powder on the, uh, on the model because that spray will take off some of the powders. And so give it a second coat of powder, then spray it again. We'll usually we'll hold it up, hold it just right for you. Okay, that's done. Okay. A little bit of sheen on here still. Let me uh add some more of that paint on the front. Don't be afraid to get the paint on the on the flanges, guys. You, again, you take that rubbing alcohol and you clean it, and you clean the it, it, clean, it comes right off. Okay, don't seal it. Uh, okay, there we go. Okay, that looks so much better. Okay, and now I'm gonna go. I have my little tube of rubbing alcohol, and it is somewhere over here. I put it away. Oh, ha! It's hiding. Here it is. Uh huh. Take the little, little bottle. Okay. Take a little bit of the rubbing alcohol. Don't drink that. It's not really that good for drinking. Um, okay. Take a little of that. Clean the top of the flanges off. Nice and easy like. Okay. That looks nice and pretty. That one's looking nice and pretty. That's clean. And all the wheels, locomotives, everything, they all get cleaned. Even if I don't do weathering on them, I still clean it for the client just because. Okay. Um, dried really fast that way. Uh, a little bit on here. There we go. Much better. And what's good about um, the Ames, as well as the Monroe powders, they hear better than pastels or other sort of powders they use. Um, 
keep that there. I'm gonna add more of that uh, dark earth powder on these now. And guys, I'm using a tiny bit, like there's nothing on this brush. Okay, and these, these powders should last you a long, long time. And, and if it doesn't look, if it looks too unison, like this one's looking a little too unison than the other truck, I'll just go back with a little bit of a, uh, a little bit of a uh, black powder. So grimy black. Okay. Just a little bit, just enough. To change up the uh, tone a little bit. There we go. That looks much better. It's not that solid. Okay. And. And that is it. This is the paint with the. Yeah. Clean it all a little black. There we go. Actually, come back on this wheel a little bit more. There's some spots that came off. I think I forgot to seal this one. Oh, maybe that sealed completely. You know, probably because I was rushing. But anyway, all right. So that's clean. That's sealed. Let's uh, clean these wheels again. This is like the most boring part of the entire thing. You know, when you're weathering. And, you know, use that dull coat far away. You don't have to go right on it. Okay? Just give it a nice it'll seal. It'll fall, let it fall onto the model. All right. And then when you want to officially seal everything, like you want to give it a second coat, then, yeah, you, may go, you might want to go a little closer to your model with the, with the spray can. Just a little blast. That's all I'm doing. I'm not doing a heavy spray. I'm doing about six, eight inches away. That's it. Whew. All right. Let's go back and do some powder work on the boxcar now. I'm glad you guys are still hanging out with me. Appreciate it. Okay. Okay, so there we are. Too clean for me. Way too clean for me. We're going to... Um, I have some of that rusty brown... And what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go ahead and use Ames Products Medium Gray. And what we're going to do is we're going to do some ballast kick up here. So you I like, look at that gray. I'm not using a lot. A lot on there. Take some more. Look, look how much. There's not a lot on there, right? Because a lot of it falls onto the model. And you brush upward. Upward. Okay. Maybe a little bit of here. So look how much is coming off my hand. It's like it's like wasted. You know, that's how much you know you know you need you don't need a lot. So that upward. You'll see why in a second. Okay. Right? Again, we're laying this over. A little bit on that brush. Upward. Blend it on. Go upward. Okay. A little bit too much on there. Spread it around if you can. Up. It's too much. Spray it off. Don't have to use it. Okay. Upward. Right? Look, we're already fading it. And I want actually have an NMRA, NMRAX clinic on fading. So if you want to look for that, it's on the touch of the brush or Joey Gento, Joseph Gento. I have no idea what it's on there. Um, I think I have it on the playlist on my YouTube channel on the NM, NM, NMRAX clinic uh, playlist. You can check out some of those playlists uh, and those videos if you want on fading. 
upward. Too much. Too much. Knock it off, guys. Okay. The door needs it. Okay, we'll do a little bit on the, just a little bit of the door, not a lot. Bottom here, right? Upward. Let it fall naturally. There's no there's no real way to do this. I mean, like one single way to do this, okay? Just upward. I gotta clean the doors. Yikes. And he wants it looking like one of the box cars I had on display. So I'm going to do something similar to that. Okay, so that's it. So you have your dust, your, your kick up, right? Uh, from the ballast. Now I'm going to go here just a little bit on the edges here. Not a lot. Like there's like barely anything on there, right? Just and not just let it subtle. Let it just hit or, or it falls. Yeah, exactly. See the railroad. I agree. Um, you're saying the, dull, the Tesla's dull code does seal it halfway. Yeah, the medium stuff works, but doesn't work too too well for me. I've, I've come to realize. Okay, a little bit on here as well. Okay, this stuff's going to get in your nose, going to get in your mouth. It's just what it is. It's part of the, all part of the fun. Okay, so there we go. All right. That's it. That's all you want to do. You don't, you don't want to go crazy. You don't have to go crazy on it. Okie dokie. So now I'm going to go with Dark Earth. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to use the same ones I used from the clinic here. The Dark Earth, uh, Monroe, even Ames, the same exact color, guys. Okay. And there's your Dark Earth. I'm going to go with some Dark Earth. Same brush. Going here a little bit down, up here, downward. Okay. You remember leopard spotting when you're um, painting your rocks? Same concept. downward blend them together okay there we go there's a little more here And blend it downward so it blends all together with the other the other gray powder so now you got a nice contrast it's all blended together right that door needs it needs a big time Maybe a little more to that door and actually i don't really like that i'm gonna go a little darker we're gonna go i'm gonna try the rusty brown actually see how that works um, medium earth. I'm gonna try medium earth here. Medium earth is nice. It's a little lighter, obviously. So here's dark and here's medium. Okay, there's a difference in color, right? Medium is good too. We're gonna put that a little. I'm gonna try down the door. See how that looks like. Can you get brush it off, clean it, or just put another layer of something else? And I'll be all right. Yeah, it lightens up just a little bit. Not exactly what I'm looking for. Uh, I'm gonna go a little bit of the. A little too much. So, so to take some of that off, you could just constantly wipe it until it comes off just a little bit, but it's too much. Okay. And I actually used a little bit of that um, that dark rust just to blend out some of that brown from the doorway. And see, it just cleans it and off just a little, nut, just enough. And may get, actually like, I may get a little bit of that here. This is when your hands get dirty, right? It's all good. You don't need gloves. Okay, so it blends all the way in. Okay. That's just two or three different powders. Um, so here's the other side, right? I'm going to do that side yet. So I'm going to do the, uh, I want to try and keep it the same here. So I'm going to use that dark earth again up here, downward. 
up here, downward. Again, it rains, right? All that dirt from the top of the roof is going to go downward. And yes, we're going to use a little bit of black too. Don't you worry. Okay. A little bit of there's a little bit in here this time, not a lot, as much as I used last time. Just enough. Blend it all, blend it all. Okay, same here. Top. Clean it, blend it. Okay. Same with here. Clean it. Well, to go up here, blend it all in. I'll take some of that off here. I don't want that powder on that board. Okay. It doesn't have to be perf perfect. There's some spots missing. That's okay. That's natural. Not every, not, not every, every piece, every space, an inch is covered with some kind of weathering all the time. It really isn't. It's there, but sometimes it's very subtle. I'm actually going to go with that. I like that, that rust blend on there. Cleans off a little bit of that, that's, um, one brown color you can see here use a little of that 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 dark rust on here it cleans off some of that um just that dark brown if it's too much take it take some off you can use that there we go yeah see does actually a good job there we go so you use a uh, dark rust took some of it off it, it lightened up the the model a little bit okay now we got the uh Sides are pretty much done. Whether it all there. All right. Next, what we're gonna do is the roof. And let me clean up here a little bit. Let me move some stuff over. Note to self: don't use the blow dryer in front of your weathering powders. You will blow it all over the place, and you just wasted a lot of money. Don't ask how I know that. Uh, black. Here it is. Okay, well, that's too darn clean, right? Go up here. We're going to blend this in, guys. I'm just using this as a base. And actually, I don't know why it's all choppy. I'm going to use the other one I have here. Um, the Ames one works, too. Okay, let's do that. There's the Ames one. There we go. Well, that's what I want. Do, do, do. Absolutely. Yeah. I, you know, I had a lot of folks go, don't share everything. You're not going to have any clients. Oh yeah, I will. I'd rather share because that's what it's about. I want people to learn how to do this stuff on their own, you know, because part of me, I've always been, a I've always been a teacher. So, um, I, I enjoy it. Okay, so it's kind of monotonous because you just like black and then there's a totally different color down here, right? So we're going to take a little bit of the uh, that black, just a little bit here and there. Where did that line come from? We're going to take some of that black, go up here, go downward. 
Okay. And if it's too black, and another layer of the other color. That's all. It's not a big deal. Like that's I don't like that. So I'm gonna change that up a bit. And somehow. This what the heck happened there? There was something on this brush that made a streak, and I don't like it now. Oh, whew, it came off. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna have to fix that side. That's okay. Like, oh my gosh, like, don't like, and don't like look at it at all, right? Yeah, we're gonna clean some of it off. And so, what we're gonna do is um, use your finger. And that's how I usually clean it off with a finger. See how it's coming off already? No, no water, no alcohol, just a dry finger. We'll do the trick. And we're going to have to just probably add a little more of that gray down here. And so what we're going to do is, um, let's see here. Uh, add a little bit of that rust. We're just going to blend some of these colors together now. Top of the roof. That What's good about this um, rust, this dark rust color, look how black it is on this side, right? And look at this side, how light it is. It's really just lining up that black stuff and it's blending it in better on the model. Okay, and there we go. All right, and if it's too dark, like I said, it's probably too dark. I'm going to do a little bit more of that gray. Did I just put it away? Yeah, Joe, we just did. Okay, uh, let me let me get it. What, what actually what happened to it? I just had it. Oh, it's right there. Duh, it's right in front of my face. Right in front of my face. Here we go. I'm going to add a little more of that. Okay. And a little more down here. And a little more and I kick up down here. Too much. Too much. Just enough. Okay. And a little bit down here. I'm going to add a little more of that brown on here, just a little bit more. Get a little of that black. Okay. A little go upward, a little more of that. But guys, I'm just blending it in. And yeah, I'm going to have a little plug in for the NMRA. We love to share. Okay. So I don't care what people, that people say they bad mouth the NMRA. And let me tell you, um, the nicest people I've ever met. They're like one of the best families I've ever been a part of besides my bio biological family. Um, I mean, yeah, you get like anywhere else, any organization you can have your people that, you know, you know, just stay, stay away from them. Okay. Um, the overall community, the family that, the NMRA is a part of, it's an amazing family. Join the NMRA, please join the NMRA. You know, the more members we have, the prices will go down eventually. You know, we're looking for more members. And you young guys out there, my age is, my age, I'm, in, I'm 34. You guys are younger and around my age, join the NMRA, okay? You can join so many, there's so many opportunities and perks you can have. And it's not just the clinics or not, or, um, or like the conventions, but even like operating, you know, you can operate. Um, all the operating uh, sessions, there are, there are a lot of people um, who do operating, uh, uh, do a bunch of operating layouts around the region. Okay, does some of the perks there. 
and 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 uh, I want to I want to take a shout out to Lucy Dorman for uh, joining the NMRA. She's a fantastic person. I'm glad to have her as a social media guru. She is. She's awesome, and um, I'm glad to have her on board with us. Um, again, okay. So we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna this, this is it here. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to seal it. And if there's anything else I need to do to it, we'll do a little bit of final touches on the model. And we're gonna get back and get our trucks and then put those on as well. Okay, so let that seal for a second. I'm gonna bring those Alco PAs in and show you uh, what they look like with the powder. So with this, the, the same techniques, okay, the very same techniques I used, I showed you guys, here's the Alco PA. And what I did was I frosted the windows using that uh, matte medium. So it looks like it's dirty. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean a little bit, just enough to where it looks like it's um, the windshield wipers are clean the dirt off. Okay. So here you can see here with all that that mix of um, powders in the in the blending, you know, you got you got your dust pickup from the ballast, you got your dirt and grime on top. Okay. There's that, and I'm gonna put that up there. But because that project is done and needs to go return to the client. Here's the B unit. Okay, same same techniques. Absolutely, man. Uh, Sparky Gordy is a great guy, and I'm you know he. I would say this: I was going through a uh, rough patch in my life a couple of years ago. And I was financially just not there to join the NMRA. And Gordy gave me the money to join for my first year because he really wanted me to join. Um, and, and yeah, he, uh, he helped me out. And then, yeah, I've been able to get myself back on my feet and do my thing, you know, and uh, still a member, you know, I renewed it my own, on my own. But that's the kind of guy Gordy is. He's a good man. And he, his vision is, it's, let's just put it this way. I'm, I'm being told through the board of directors and, and other people that there's a whole lot of cool stuff that's coming. So please stay tuned for that. Um, and also that, uh, you know, there's a lot of new and exciting stuff that he wants to do. And it's only going to get better from here. And I know it is. I, I believe him and I know it is because it is a re it's already getting better. So yeah, join NMRA guys. Become become NMRA member. Um, again, I'm not sponsored by NMRA. I am a member. I enjoy the organization. I love the people. They're so nice. We're a great group of, of folks. Um, I call them family. They know. They call me family, and that's what makes me. Um, it's just just so much. It just touches my heart so much when you have people like that in your life who um, believe in the same things. And again, every organization has their pros and cons, everything, you know, and every, we're human, right? That's just the way it is. You're going to have some setbacks. You're going to have some some good steps moving forward. And now what I see going on with the organization is that nothing but good things happening, seriously. And I and, and I full believe that it's we're going to bring it. It's going to be a huge, huge comeback from what it was maybe maybe like a decade ago as I finish up my cold coffee. Ooh. That's some good stuff. Okay. Um, I would um, also want to give a little shout out to, at the NMRA show, I, 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 I forgot the gentleman's name, and I'm, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm horrible with names. I really am. People know me. I tell them I'm bad with names. But the um, RS Laser Kick, Kick, <laughs> RS Laser Kits, um, this couple are some of the sweet, most sweetest couples I've ever met. Um, they have an amazing, amazing laser kit um, product. And I actually bought this derelict passenger car from them. This is going to be my first laser kit that I'm going to build. And I'm really excited. 
um, I forgot the the wife's name, but she helped me. She walked me through and how to put it together. Um, any, they have a great catalog. Okay, I'm not sponsored by anybody, guys. I just want to give a shout out to these guys because they are super nice, and the prices are very very decent for uh, razor cut uh, for these RS laser kits. And they have a lot of old school kits, and this is their catalog. Okay, um, on my since I'm waiting for the stuff to dry, just give it a second here. Um, I might do a spray paint clinic with uh, with my buddy. My friend Joe is he's taught me a lot about spray painting, and he is a um, he he used to work on model cars and RC cars. That was his hobby for years, and then he went professionally in painting real vehicles, and. Um, and he does amazing artwork. He showed me a lot of different kind of techniques, um, and so we might do an actual live clinic on how to wet, how to spray paint. So if you guys want something like that, we can do that for the channel. Um, I'm trying to make TOTB the this channel more towards the weathering and painting aspect more than just model railroading and period. Um, but although I like sharing the other layout, and speaking of layouts, I do have the pen writing industrial division. There is a separate youtube channel just for the train layout um, which is being worked it's being worked on currently i have the trains running already but now we're going to be um working on the wiring and i'm converting the half the mountain scenery i'm going to be building a city scene so i'm excited for that um guys if you know jack ellis e-l-l-i-s is his last name from barn mills he did a fantastic clinic and nmra show um, hey, Jared. Nice to see you, buddy. Thanks for joining. I'm glad you're here. Jared's a cool guy. We uh, operated on uh, Chris Atkins lay. I did a really he did a really good job. And uh, he was one of my one of my students, which was fun. Um, yeah, absolutely. Weathering a building. Will you be something new? Weathering a building? No. Um, I weather actually don't no, let me bring a building for you. I, I love um, Jack Ellis. Is, like I was saying, Sparky, Jack Ellis has an amazing clinic on weathering buildings and man i'll tell you i wanted to go I, as much as i love dallas i wanted to go home and start working on my structures um here's something you can look at actually right here let me grab this okay so this is cardboard right and what i did was this is all cardboard so i repainted it and i added the weathering on here and all i did was i took a brush and a str streak downward black the black powder and this dark rust powder, oh, dark rust powder. Okay, that's all I did, and it, and it that's all that's all you really need. And this is just a backdrop, background steel building that's working for the steel industry. And this was on my original Penn Reading Industrial Division layout. Um, I'll show you something. I would like to do a, a clinic on on rust, which will be really cool to do. Uh, let me grab a building here really quickly. So just simple black powders on this one here. Um, all I did was use just black powders just to weather the brick a little bit. That's all you need to do. A little bit of um, dirt grime down here on the concrete. Um, but there's a lot more I'm going to go involved. Uh, I'm going to go more involved into the weathering buildings. But that's something there. This just just a little bit subtle subtleness that goes a long way on buildings. Let me see if we grab another uh, little building. So this one's the same with that um, steel building, black and rust powders on top of the rooftops here on this one, okay? I'm actually probably gonna redo this one again as far as the brick is concerned. Probably do some painting on the brick, but just some dark black powders really. Just enough to give it a little bit more of a character to the uh, to the model. That, I mean, you know, so that's, that's all for that. All right, let, let's check our, our box car here. It's, yeah, it should be dry. Don't call it dries really fast, especially the uh, esters. Okay.
Yeah, see, that actually came out really nice. What I might do is add a little more of that gray. What do I do with it? Oh, it's right here. And we'll spray a little, just enough there to give us some of that gray on. So look, see the powders are dried up on here. It dried and sealed really nice with that testers. Whereas the matte medium doesn't really do as great of a job. So we go back on here. Some of them off. Blend it in just a little bit. There's a little bit of that kick up on the bottom here. See so it came off, but I'm gonna I'm gonna add another layer on here. Take a little bit of that brown and a little bit up here to clean off. There we go. Now come that'll probably come off the top, which is okay. I don't want that up there. And blend that in. Voila. Okay, I'm gonna seal this up and that'll be it for this car. Um, what we're gonna do is put the wheels back on, see what the full car looks like. Okay, and I'll continue the the, the underbody here off camera. That way we don't have to uh, sit here and watch Joey do that. I think you guys sat here long enough <laughs> to watch me do all the stuff that was maybe hope, hope not too boring, but you know, just sitting, just sitting there watching the wheels can be rather Painstaking. Okay. There we go. Do that there. Put that on there. And voila, there's your there's your weather freight car, guys. And look at look how realistic the wheels look. How look how well it blends in. And, and you actually see. You look at here you may want to add a little bit of that gray powder not just not, not a lot but just enough to uh give us some some dust kick up from the uh from the ballast too okay so now see now it blends in better so it looks like the kick the dust kick up from the ballast on the trucks goes up towards the car body right a little bit of there boop boop that's it just enough, just so it shows a little bit. I think I think that's ready to go. I hope Jacob will be really satisfied with this. Again, if there's something's needed to change, I can always change it if it, due, due to his request. Okay, and don't forget too. A lot of times when I have my client, you know, I'll, I'll put a model on. They'll say it's perfect, and then there's something on it that they may. They may want to change, so you know I'm at the mercy of my of my clients. Um, they're the ones that are paying me, but also a lot of times they, they say, "Hey, whatever you think is best, go for it." You know, and they they you know and they let me do what I need to do. So um, you know, having clients like that are awesome as well. And so there are certain things that go they go yeah, you know that's a little too black, or that's a little too much for us. And you go, you know, you're right. There's a little too much there, and I'll change it up. And then they'll go perfect, and I go, you know what? You're right. Now it's better. You know, I'll take it sometimes, just like if you're reading, if you're, let's say you're, you're trying to correct your, your, your writing, or let's say you have your child that's doing an essay and you, you know, or, you know, when you, when you write something, you type something, you constantly read the same thing, you know, you, you won't catch up on the errors, right? If you step away for a little bit and come back to the model, just like you go come back to your essay, you'll find certain grammar errors or some punctuations or maybe a run-on sentence same thing with the models you know sometimes you have to come back to it and go okay yo that needs to be changed or this needs a little bit more of this you know or a little less of that so um we're going to spray this down one more time to seal it completely 
and this part will be done, guys. Okay, I've been on here for an hour and 35 minutes. I will go more, you know. Uh, is, there, is there anything else that you guys want me to do since I'm still on here? You know, all questions, you know, bring bring them on. Is, 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 if there's any other weathering you want me to do, I'll show you. You know, we're here. Might as well, right? And maybe we'll do a separate clinic later on on other techniques like rusting and fading. I'll do that too. Unless there's something you really want me to show you now, we can do that now. Awesome. Awesome. Not boring at all. Burning something. Lacquer is. Okay, I'm going to scroll through here. Yeah, yes, yes, Sparky. That was cardboard. This is cardboard. And here's another one I did, too. This is cardboard as well. Now, I, now the top is styrene, but the rest is all cardboard. This is cardboard, okay? Right? That's all cardboard in here. Yeah, that's it. And this is a good back background building. Um, you know, again, whether your grass, whether your foam, I mean your foam, your rocks and stuff like that, weathering rocks is kind of cool too. And you know, you can do your leopard spotting. Um, it works as well. Um, let me go in here. Ooh, that was really close. Um, you know, you can uh, there we go, much better. Um, yes. Um weathering your rocks, definitely weather your rocks. Um, buildings again when you weather one thing everything pretty much needs to be weathered um wow i look tired um maybe i need more coffee <gasps> i'm out of coffee that's not good i gotta make more <laughs> um but yeah definitely weather everything you know once you weather one thing you have to weather the track you know it's just just everything needs to get weathered eventually um i'm gonna scroll through the comments here there's more um and then no 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 Grandpa Rails, man, I miss you, man. I'm I'm sorry we never got a chance to meet up. Um, let's see. Well, uh, Sparky, I'm glad you enjoyed this. Um, is there anything you need me to do? Um, <laughs> Irish coffee. You know that's not a bad idea. But I, I after this, I may go to my buddy's house and have a little drink with him before I go home. Before I come back home. Uh, I'm actually going rail fanning with my buddies tomorrow. I haven't gone rail fanning in years. Yeah, I work for a railroad, but, you know, to get out and actually take photos is something I haven't done in a long time. So I'll be missing that. I never, I, well, I rail, I live not far. I live like 20, 30 minutes away from the KCS main line. And so I haven't really, uh, uh, um, let's say, rail fan the CPKC, you know, so that'd be pretty cool to do. You're welcome, Tim. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Um, again, is there anything else? We'll we'll do another clinic later on. Maybe I'll give more of a heads up the next time I do one. Um, <laughs> CV, that's BS. You know, quit quit that negativity. I know I know you're being funny, but seriously, um, just take a car, take a take a cheap car that you have, and just go to town. Even even if you can't find a freight car, um, you can get a piece of styrene, seal it, and just work on weathering from there. And see how what kind of techniques you can use. Um, you can use paper. There's so many things you can, I mean, heck, you know, you can find a bottle, oop, find a bottle cap, just spray, just weather the top of this cap just to get used to the techniques and then work your way into the, uh, weathering on your, on your rolling stock and locomotives. Um, all right. You want, all right, Jared, I appreciate Yeah, We'll do it. Good night, Sparky. Have a good night, man. Um, yeah, that's what Ralph said. Ralph. Renzetti was my mentor. Okay, he's still my mentor. Um, I'll get a billion comments, say, great job, awesome stuff. And then he'll go, that's nice, Joe, but what about this? Have you tried this way? You know, that's a real teacher. You know, and I go, man, I ain't thinking about that. You know, he goes, you know, FaceTime me. Let's do, let's work on this. That's the way Ralph is. He's a good guy. Um, you know, he, he took me under his wing. Um, you know, another good guy to look out uh, for a lot of these techniques, uh, Dan's Railroad 2011. 
Um, he's a he's he has a great YouTube channel. Um, he's a young guy too, and uh, he's really really good with weathering. I learned a lot from him as well. Um, you know, so uh, again, so the 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 materials I used really quickly. Okay, we'll go with paints first. Uh, Anita's acrylics, rainy day gray. Okay. Oh wow, that's like blind uh, expo overexposed. I don't know if you can see it or not, but rainy day gray. Earth brown, okay, earth brown, and then flat black or just black. But make sure they, they actually it, it dries flat. That's why I like these colors. They do they do they, they work really nice. Um, and it's hard to you know Hobby Lobby now somehow it's not they don't have those. They have a different kind of paint, and it really bothers me. Oh, I'll keep it PG. There's other words I like to say, but. Um, Apple Barrel is another good product you can use. Get these at Walmart, Hobby Lobby. Um, really cheap, two, three bucks a bottle. Okay, that's you forever. Um, rubbing alcohol, okay. Um, powders, okay. I use Ames products. Um, I have the whole thing here. Um, A-I-M-P-R-O-D-X.com, aimproducts.com. Um, that that's their website. You can look for these. These are these powders here. They come in these containers. Now, if they don't make them anymore, or if they don't have, they don't supply them anymore. Monroe models is a great one as well. Okay, these are ones that actual ones are used for the clinic. Definitely check out those. And then, um, I'm trying to think of what else. You know, so those are good. Uh, oh, the Tessa's Dull Coat is good. When we do, I'll do another clinic and. Sponges, guys. Sponges is another good way to do some weathering work. Okay. Testers. Testers Dull Coat. Great, great product. Rosolium Matte Medium works too. Um, or Chris, the, uh, the Crystal Clear Enamel works as, just as well. Uh, I'm trying to see what else here. Really, Apple Barrel paints. Um, like Delta is another good one. Folk. Folk. Blah, blah, blah. Bulk Art is another good one. Um, those are some good powder um, paints you can use. Um, and references, guys. Books. Books. Books, 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 books. These are expensive, I know. Um, Google doesn't have everything, guys. You won't you won't find a lot of stuff on Google. And the reason for it, your algorithms will change to the point where you can't find anything. I'll, I'll put in Conro Boxcar. I'll get a bunch of tangent advertising or a bunch of Atherin advertising. I'm looking for just a regular freight car, guys. I'm not looking for a model, you know? Um, and so references on books, DVDs, VHS tapes, um, YouTube videos. I take a lot of screenshots. My phone's covered with screenshots. Uh, if you go out rail fanning, take photos of freight cars that you think that look cool. And the way it is, you tra train your eye to, um, to look at these um, freight cars and go, okay, that takes an airbrush or that will take some dry brushing and that will take a little bit of um uh we call it uh, maybe a q-tip on and you know a little bit of stuff here that'll take that color powder you know you want your eyes to uh, adjust your eyes and train your eyes to look at a freight car you won't look never look at it the same way again especially when you start weathering your your models okay um you know and so products being used simple brushes like these are great these are great for uh not products but some, uh, materials uh, your tools. These are look at how soft that is. These soft brushes are great. Um, these makeup pads are nice, right? These are awesome. Um, I mean, look at look at all the different kind of size paint brushes I have in here. Okay, that's just water. Um, rubbing alcohol works as well. Um, acrylic paint thinner. You know, you, you can use this. This it works. I, I I use a tiny tiny bit of it. I use it mostly to clean um, my airbrush with. Uh, what else do I have here? Um, trying to think of what else. I mean, those brushes are good. Again, look at all the different kinds of weathering brushes I have. That one's got to go in there. That's not a weathering brush. Um, okay. Look at the different, look at the different kinds of brushes I have here. This is very stiff. You see, look at, look at the brush, you know, that's a nice, uh, stiff one. This is a little softer. This is really soft. Okay, a used brush. Actually, guys, if you use a used brush, they sometimes work the best. Again, if you look at all the different supplies I have here, um, 
and it's funny because you will tend to use the same brushes over and over again. Like use all different brushes I've collected over the years, all of them for a different purpose. This one I use for heavy duty. Um, these are nice and firm brushes that I've collected uh, over the years. They're good too. Um, these foam brushes are really good too. Like these, if you're dabbing, um, I, I like them, but I don't really use them. They they work. Um, not not like not not to my taste. You know, it's another good brush. And these soft brushes are good too. Uh, I got another comment here. Let me see. Why chat? Yes, I use weather pencils. Um, okay, so you asked um, about the powders. Okay, I, I mentioned here the uh, AIM products. If you look at their website, it's A I M P R O D X dot com. Um, AIM, these AIM products, the weathering powders are great, like grimy black, rust. Rust, uh, rusty brown, dark earth. Um, in, okay, so like for instance, this dirty yellow, right? Um, you can use this. You can use this for your um, for your new wheel look. Um, let me uh, let me actually grab my box of my display cars here for you and show you. Okay, let me, uh, I got my box here from actually the clinic. Um, here. So for instance, this wheel right here. So look at that wheel. It looks like it's brand new, right? The wheels look brand new. That's that yellow powder mixed with uh, a little bit of the, um, a little, I want to say white and yellow paint. Okay. And I uh, just add a little dark black to it. And you can see, look at this wheel is weathered and this one's glossy, right? I, you can use gloss black paint or a gloss um, sealant. So like that crystal clear enamel is really good. And it looks like a brand new wheel that just been painted, a truck been painted and the wheels are brand new. And use a little bit of that blue paint on the uh, on the bearings, right? Give it that, like that new look, a new wheel. Here's the weathered and there's the new wheel, okay? Um, so yeah, that's that's how you do that one. Let's see here. Alcohol inks, I'm yes and no. I don't really use them uh, too often. Um, they uh, that's something I will have to actually experiment with in order to show you guys. Um, that's a good idea. I should start using that. Same thing, same same thing with the um, um, we call oil paints. You know, like gouache paints. The gouache paints is a good watercolor. Uh, that's how I do the rust, the rusting. So rust. really quickly here. So gouache paint. It's a watercolor base, but it's a texture paint. And that's how you, that's a little bit of mix of both there. Okay, and so about weathering pencils. Um, yes, a rust pencil will look really, really nice. Um, a, a, ru a rust pencil, uh, it's good for doing streaks. Um, I also use a white pencil um, for, uh, not white, I'm sorry. Um, well, white you can use, but um, a regular pencil, actually. Um, one of these pencils, right? Number two pencil. Um, the lead is actually a good, it looks good. You could scrape it off and use the, uh, the scrape, the, uh, the, um, the dust from the, uh, the, the, uh, the lead, right? And put it on your locomotive fuel tank. And then you have a fuel spot, an oil spot, excuse me. Um, so that's another way you can do that. Um, let me see here. Actually, here's from the clinic. Someone didn't want this. Someone left it, so I took it. But uh, there's the same techniques we just used. And these are the the uh, the pro the the uh, um, excuse me the um, the clinic practice shells. Uh, talk about gouache paints. Okay, here's. Is we'll get it. I'll do a clinic on that for you guys, an online uh, clinic for you guys on um, graphite powder. Thank you. <laughs> That's the name of it. Thank you, man. But look at the gouache, okay? And you streak it downward and you get your you get your streaks. I'm actually going to redo a little bit of this, but I was just trying to show folks uh, how, how easy it is to use to do rust 
effects with using the goo wash um goo wash paints um let's see here weathering uh okay let's th we're gonna take this one out actually okay the same techniques we used right i used on this bowser model and this is a um, a freight a um, a cement hopper that is actually in the cement industry. So you use a lot of light browns and whites and grays for that. Okay, it's the same techniques though. Look at the wheels. They'll look at the uh, right. Look at the um, the trucks. They look a lot of grays, a lot of whites because it went through a concrete plant. That's what it's for. A lot of a lot of white overspray. Even the top has a lot of white. Okay, so that's one way to do it. Another way. Another way to use the powders. Um, and that's done there. And I got one more thing to show you guys. But I think my, how my, how's my battery doing? Oh, battery's good. Um, let's see here. Put this back in there. Yeah. Actually, I'm going to put this on a layout later. How about that? Um, really quickly. A coal car okay just black powders a little bit of brown but mostly black powders okay that's how easy it is to do coal cars you can paint the inside too i usually do some painting and that's actually too not really fully done but okay and then last but not least okay like a jump load here's some old plastic wheels I first painted, I actually have a video, a how-to video, look through my how-tos, I have a how-to video how I created this, okay? Um, these are just plastic wheels. Yeah, you can use purple, right, for the ore cars, that's absolutely correct. You know, and the color coding is very important. Um, that's something I'm still looking into as well, is the color coding. Um, camouflage spray paint, that's the first thing I did. Then I used those dark rust, light rust, Dark earth and brown and black powders. Just constantly blended it in. And that's how you get your junk load. So and I didn't weather this freight car on purpose. So that way you can really see what a junk load, a junk load looks like on a new car. Okay. Obviously this car probably needs to get weathered anyway. <laughs> but uh, that was just for a display purpose. So. Again, guys, I really appreciate everybody being here. Um, thank you for so much for the support, um, and I, uh, uh, we call it's going to say, um, uh, yeah, support, um, you know, any questions, feel free to contact me anywhere you, you so please. I mean, on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, um, anywhere, you know, any questions, just, 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 just holler really. Um, you know, I, I, I enjoy helping folks. I help and enjoy, uh, I enjoy, um, excuse me, um, helping folks not be afraid, you know, to weather. So, um, again, guys, it's Joey G here uh, with Touch of the Brush Model Weathering. Thank you, everybody, for being out there. And I uh, hope you guys have a great rest of your weekend. Happy Labor Day. And stay tuned because I will have another clinic here, hopefully either the next week or maybe the week after. I want to do something, uh, show you how to do some rust streaks and um, and uh, use gouache paints to create rust, rust effects. Excuse me. That, that coffee. It's not a burp from the coffee. <laughs> so, thank you guys again. Uh, you're welcome, Grandpa Rails. Thank you. Uh, everybody, subscribe to each other's channel um, if you haven't already. Like everybody's channel. We're, we're a family here. We're a community. And we're nothing but good people on here. So, all right. You're welcome, Tim. Absol ab absolutely. Anytime. You know, Jared, thank you for stopping in. Ken Stein, thank you for stopping in. My students from the clinic, thank you so much. Jared, I hope you like this car. Uh, let me know if there's any changes that need to happen. See if you're railroad. Thank you, man. Uh, I'm going to check out more of your videos. I need to catch up on a lot of videos, actually. But again, Jared, thank you so much. This uh, video is for everybody. It's for you. And that freight car is for you. So uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Take care. God bless.